so. Better? Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know now. Okay, so basically what we do here is we practice connecting breath and body, uh, breath, body, and mind through yoga and meditation practices. We'll start with a seated meditation, move into, uh, and then start moving through some yoga, yoga poses you probably are familiar with, some maybe that you're not, and then uh, some functional movement, physical therapy, and lymphatic shaking. And then we'll end with a nice long shavasana final relaxation pose. Everything that I lead you through is an invitation. So don't get um, hung up on how it looks. It's much more important to me that you are committed to how it feels in your body. So feeling challenged or uncomfortable is okay, but we don't want to be in sharp pain or anything like that. Good morning, Greg. Welcome in. Hello, hello. Happy Monday. And so, yeah, we'll get started uh, seated up nice and tall. Let's um, pause this, pause, pause, pause. Make sure everything's on silent. If you don't have like a yoga mat, don't get too hung up on it. You can always use a towel or a blanket for underneath your knees. Coming to a comfortable seated position. I like to sit in Sukhasana, that's just sitting cross-legged. It's uh, called easy sitting pose, but um, it doesn't really mean it's easy. That's just what it translates to. I like to sit up on like a little blanket. Um, a block is too high for me, but it might work for you. Just to elevate your hips a bit and let your knees kind of relax down by the sides. Heart comes over hips, head over heart, silence all your devices, just give yourself a few minutes here without any notifications coming from anywhere but internally. <laughs> Hands come to rest on the lap, either palms down to ground down or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you got a little extra to give today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable, if not lower than, lowering them to a soft gaze just beyond your legs. We'll start with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, shoulders rise up towards the ears, and out through the mouth, shoulders drop away with an audible sigh. Let the breathing continue just through the nose, if that's available, returning to a natural breath's pace. And we'll take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. Become present to yourself here in this moment, here in this space. Allow sounds into your awareness. Perhaps the sound of falling rain or passing traffic. Or the ticking of a clock, humming of a radiator within your home. Allowing all sounds in all part of this moment, this experience. And 
Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. And feel the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. Weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. Checking in for any places of tightness or sensitivity, any restlessness or fidgeting. Scanning the body and locating places that you'll work into or give specific uh, mind to effort into throughout your movement practice today. And we'll shift that attention from Anamaya Kosha, the body, to Pranamaya Kosha, the energetic level, the breath. Noticing where you're at energetically on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being exhausted, fatigued, ready to crawl into bed. 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. And turning the attention to the breath. No need to change it, just observe inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space in between. So you just notice the quality of the breath here. Observation without judgment. Notice how deep or shallow. How even or one-sided. And where the breath lives. Is it filling the chest or the belly? Or can you really only feel it at the throat? And we shift that awareness up to the mind, Manomaya Kosha. Allow thoughts and feelings to arise freely and observe them from a distance. Like clouds passing in the sky, we allow them to float by, no need to engage.
notice what are the quality of the thoughts today. Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. We'll bring the attention back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale let something more go. Inhaling through the nose, belly fills like a balloon, expanding, inflating. And exhales, draw belly button in towards spine, squeezing the air out, complete exhalation. Inhales, fill belly, and then ribs expand, filling the torso with air. And exhaling, ribs zip in, belly pulls in. Slow, deep breaths here. And we'll layer on our pranayam, our breathing technique that we're working on this month is called Ujjayi Pranayam, victorious breath. And it's commonly known as ocean sounding breath. We achieve this by bringing a slight constriction to the throat so that you can begin to hear your inhalations and exhalations through the nose. Almost like you're trying to fog up a mirror just beyond your face using just your nose. So your breath should be loud enough that if in a yoga studio, the person on the mat next to you could hear your breath, but perhaps the person two mats down could not. The face be soft, muscles in the forehead relax, space between the eyebrows nice and broad. Space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw relaxes as well. If the mind wanders, bring it back to the breath, back to this pranayam breathing practice, the constriction of the throat, the air passing in and out through the nose, filling and exiting the belly. Next time you exhale, releasing any effort from the breath, releasing any constriction from the throat, returning to a natural breath's pace, perhaps affected by that pranayam, that breathing exercise. So we practice pranayam, practice these breathing exercises to 
help build a relationship with the breath so that we can use it as a tool on our lives off the mat and help us calm down the nervous system, take us out of sympathetic fight or flight into parasympathetic rest and digest. And the yogis would say it builds prana, builds life force within the body, builds energy. You got your hands uh, to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra, thumbs pressed into sternum. And consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. It might be the Sankalpa Heart's Desire you've been working with all along. It might be your New Year's resolution or something new might have inspired you to come to your mat today. The invitation is just to set it in the positive and uh, present tense. So it might sound something like, I flow through life with ease and grace. <clears throat> and we'll set that intention with the sound of Om. Of course, you're invited to chant along with me. First, a cleansing breath. <sighs> Allow your hands to release down to your lap, chin drops towards chest, and on an inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest, left ear rolls over towards left shoulder. Just allowing the head to gently roll side to side, bringing movement gently into the body. The next time the head rolls through center, we'll bring it up to neutral. Begin to roll the shoulders forward. So I was listening to an interview yesterday with a neuroscientist, and um, oh, she was promoting a new book, as one does on an interview or podcast. She's talking about neurocycles and uh, neuroplasticity. She's really one of the first um, scientists who, who pulled that out of speculation and into the research lab to show and prove uh, what we all now know is true, that our brains are plastic, that they're able to change and heal themselves. Roll the shoulders back. And back in the 80s, <clears throat> back in the 80s when she was uh, studying and running these tests, it was uh, kind of just hearsay and people basically believed that once your brain was set it was set and there was really nothing you could do about it and we know that that's not true anymore so that's great for people with oh, hold on. brain damage and all of that of course um, but it's also great for people who are just trying to change their brain patterns right so let's come to stillness in the shoulders and inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, right hand releases down, left arm reaches over. Inhaling up through center, and we'll exhale over to the left. So we're just gonna go side to side like this, following the breath in to rise and out to bend. Basically, she has a five uh, step, not program, but a uh, strategy to change habits, not just habits, but um, 
to actually like build new connections within your brain. And would you know, all right, let's bring it up to center and then we'll twist it out to the right. So the left hand lands on right knee, right hand lands behind you. Let's open the chest towards the side wall. Inhale it back up through center. So you're just a gentle twist. We're not going for any personal records or anything too extreme. We're just waking the body up. Waking the body up to this movement. The exhales are the twist. And would you know that the centerpiece of her strategies that are clinically proven to help heal the brain, change uh, change the actual makeup of the brain is intention setting. Okay, so this is not what she called it. She didn't call it intention setting, but it's literally exactly what we do here. Alright, we'll bring it back up through center and release the hands down to shoulder height. And we'll wave it out. So basically, the steps, I'm probably going to butcher them a little bit because I mostly paid attention to the intention setting part, but it's you, first is you notice a trigger in your life. So something that makes you, something that you'd, you'd like to change. So something that like triggers fear or anxiety or um, anger, maybe. And it's like, well, the example they use is like the news cycle. So let's bring the palms down. So we're warming up the hands here, warming up all the muscles, ligaments, tendons, wiggling the fingers, the elbows aren't moving, right? We're just working on hands and wrists. Um, so they use the news cycle as an example. Every time they listen to the news, they are triggered and in fear. Okay, so they notice that. The next thing you do is you you think about it, you're like, oh, is this every time I watch the news? Like, is this every time I hear about something on the news that I'm triggered in fear? It's like, all right, you think about it. Then you write it down. So you kind of like journal about it. And it's like, all right, what is it? What is the trigger and what is the result? Palms flip up to the sky, fingers spread wide. It's almost like you're trying to get your fingernails to touch the back of your forearms. And then you discuss it with someone. So you like, speak it out loud like hey when this happens then this and then it's like well what would you like the alternative to be um that like when you watch the news you're like okay i see what's happening it's scary but i don't have to feel fear right now because me feeling fear right now is not actually going to solve the problem i'm just gonna shake water off um so even though what I'm seeing may be true, what I can do is just what I can do in my own life. And probably if I'm fearful every time I'm watching the news, I'm doing everything that I can do in my power to be safe. But the rest of my life is better off not living in fear. So you come up with a phrase. Great. And let's leave that. Send the legs out in front. Spread and scrunch the toes. Waking up the lower legs now. So the phrase might sound something like, I am safe, or I'm well, I'm healthy. So, um, so whatever that phrase is that makes you like, that reminds you like, oh no, like I'm, I'm alive and I'm safe. I'm calm and I'm peaceful, whatever that might be. Then her recommendation, I think she even like made a whole app for this, but you could just use like reminders on your phone, is at least seven times to set a timer on your phone or a reminder to show up at least seven times, she says, that play, plays that message for you. So you have to read it, so you read it out loud or read it in your head. Um, and then you just notice like, oh, am I in a state of fear right now? And then it's like a little reminder like, but I'm safe and I'm calm, I'm peaceful and I'm alive, you know, whatever that might be. Let's come up off this blanket, bend in the knees, and drop the knees side to side. Far enough away that the knee doesn't land on top of the other foot. And yeah, so after, let's see. So you have to do this for 21 days for the brain, like straight, like without breaking. And then it was 62 days, which is such a random number. Like, don't we just love numbers like? 
25 or like 30, but it was 62 days that it's like actually a habit and like the brain's actually changed and you're, there are people, 84% of people were no longer like triggered by the thing. So, I don't know, I thought that was really cool. Obviously, I like related it back to yoga because at least once a day, at least twice a day, if you're coming to class, you're getting to repeat your intention, what you're living into, what you're trying to build in your life. You know, ease and grace, patience, resilience, whatever it is that you're setting in the beginning of class, and then we're reminded at the end of class. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really super need science to validate like everything in my life, but it's nice when it does, isn't it? Isn't it nice when it does? All right, so now that our knees are over to the right, let's drop the right hand back behind you, close to the hip. <clears throat> and then the left arm swoops forward and up, hips raise up, chest lifts up. So that's an inhale, exhaling, hips touch down. We drop the left hand down to the ground, drop the knees over to the left. Right arm sweeps up, hips and chest rise up. So we're just easing into this motion as we have a few... Uh, left, two left on each side. So each time we go into it, maybe pressing a little bit more, but not so much that it takes your breath away. We're just opening up and waking up the front side of the body, the hips, shoulders. Remembering to breathe. One more on each side. And then we'll bring the hands to frame the, <clears throat> the right knee. Tabletop pose, hands under shoulders, knees below hips. And an inhale, belly drops, hips and chest rise, the cow pose. And exhaling round in the spine, chin tucks towards chest for cat. And really pulling the belly button in towards the spine here for a complete exhalation. Inhaling, cat. Uh, cow pose, hands are pressing down and back, knees are pressing down and forward, like you're going to scrunch your mat together. And exhale through cat, hands press down and forward, knees press down and back. Sort of leverage to round the spine even deeper. Connect the speed of your body to the length of your breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose if that's available to you. And the next time you exhale, put your cow pose, out through cat pose, uh, let it be your last, and we'll meet back in tabletop. Bring the knees together, and sit back on the heels. Just mindful, does this feel okay on the knees? A nice uh, top of the foot ankle stretch, if you're not used to sitting this way, it's called hero's pose. If this is like a little bit much on the knees, you can bring the uh, blanket, or a block between your thighs and your hips, and that's gonna um, take the, the angle a little bit wider on the knees and not be as intense. <clears throat> if this doesn't work at all, like if you're not sitting down, if you're here, then uh, just sit any other, any other different way. Um, Cross-legged or with legs out in front works too. We'll work on our neck resiliency. So, <clears throat> chin tucks down towards chest, we roll the head forward, all the way up, back, and then chin tucks in towards chest. So my whole body's still, it's just my head and neck moving to the very edges of my range of motion for my cervical spine, my neck. Oh, 
We'll change directions. Chin reaches up towards the sky, forward towards the front wall, down towards the ground, and once it comes back in. So we're smoothing out this movement. Really getting acquainted with the mobility of the cervical spine, the neck. Imagine each vertebra moving smoothly and independently. Just visualizing that even if it's not so. Bring the head back through center. Drop the head left and right, left and right towards the shoulders. Just kind of shake it off. Get off the knees here. Back onto hands and feet. Nope. Hands and knees for tabletop. And let's actually just step it up now uh, between the hands. One foot and then the other, whichever one is just fine. We'll heel toe the feet out to the edges of the mat. And we'll let the knees bend deep, deep into our deep squat malasana. So heavy hips, light head, hands are on the ground and then extend the legs up. Doesn't matter if they're straight, we're just going between deep squat and forward fold. So it doesn't have to be your deepest squat or your deepest fold. We're just waking the legs up, giving some space and blood into the knees after all of that sitting. And the next time you're in this forward fold with a heavy head and light hips, we'll stay there and the breathing continues. The knees can be a little or a lot bent as you take your hands away from the ground. If you're pressing the ground away, release it. Giving the head a nod, yes. If you're feeling pain in your lower back or your hamstrings, that's your upper back legs, just bend your knees even more. Your belly can even be on your thighs here. This head nod, yes. Shake no. Hands grab <clears throat> opposite elbows to create a frame for the head for ragdoll. And here's a little free movement. You can bob forward and back, side to side, bending deeper into one leg and then the other. We're just kind of letting the top body be super heavy. Letting gravity in the head be heavy, elongating the spine here, and stretching out back, side, body. We'll meet back in center. Hands release down, heel toe the feet together, big toes come to touch, a little space between the heels for the ankles, and inhale, halfway lift. Hands come onto shins, crown of the head towards the front of the room, hips towards the back, deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. The inhale rolls you up one vertebra at a time. Heavy head comes up last. Inhale, the arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center. For Tadasana Mountain Pose. So heavy. All right, let's get a sip of water. Got to rearrange my wide view. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, you're gonna be standing at the top of your mat unless you have a dresser in your way like I do. <laughs> Namaste, Kesha. Welcome in, welcome in. Great to see you, how are you, my friend? Big toes come to touch. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Yes, one more time. Full body stretch. Exhale as the hands come down to heart center, the right knee pulls in towards the body. So I'm floating this leg up, 
one-legged Tadasana. Then hinge on the left hip, the right leg gets sent back behind you. We're just in this for one moment, Bear of Hadrasana 3, our uh, warrior 3, like making the letter T with the body, bend in the left knee and float the right foot down. So this is a transition to our high lunge. Left knee finds its way over left ankle. Right ankle is pressing down towards the ground. It's not going to touch, but it'll give a nice stretch to this right calf muscle. Arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, shoulders melt away. Left hips pulling back, right hips pulling forward. Full breath in here. And exhale is a high twist to the left. The left hand reaches back behind you, moving nice and slow like moving through honey. And inhale back up through your center. Exhale, twist, same side. So we're turning towards the bent knee leg. Inhale, center. And exhale, twist. Hold it here and the breathing continues. Right hand's reaching forward, left hand's reaching back. The breath is full even in the contortion of the twist. Maybe this left hand releases down towards the lower back or towards that right thigh. And the right arm can reach up towards the sky. So you feel a nice deep stretch in this whole right side body. And like pressing rewind, we bring the arms back through like the letter T. Back through center. And then we'll step it up. Right foot steps up to meet both left. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center and the left knee pulls in towards the body. One legged Tadasana. Finding a drishti, a focal point for the eyes to land on. I imagine it's where the sky meets the ocean, that horizon line. We hinge on the right hip. Left leg gets sent back like a seesaw. The weight of the head comes forward as the weight of the leg goes back. Just a moment here in our warrior three, like making the letter T in the body. Right knee bends and left foot floats down to the ground. Gently landing. How to control trembling on one leg. So that's super normal, that's super natural that your leg is trembling and that when your one leg comes up, all right, let's um, find our, our uh, high lunge and then I'll talk to you here. So right knee is over right ankle, left ankle is pressing, left heel is pressing back like it's going to touch the ground even though it's not, it stays up. Right hip pulled back, left hip pulled forward. The arms are up overhead. And we relax the shoulders away. Can you even bend the elbows just a little bit to release any tension in the neck and shoulders? So how do you control the trembling? You kind of don't. Trembling is actually a great sign. It means that your, your muscles are really working, uh, which means that they're getting stronger. So there's lots of poses that I still experience trembling in um, with the one legged stuff. I'm like at the point where the small stabilization muscles like in my ankles are like used to it. So that's the thing, you're building up these small sta stabilizing and stability muscles, uh, so trembling is totally natural, it's actually a good sign. So, got one deep breath in here. And the exhale, we twist right. Right hand reaches behind you, left arm reaches forward, chest opens towards the side wall, towards the bent knee leg. Inhale, back up through center. Same side, twist right. And you do want to make sure that you're breathing too. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist, especially in those balancing poses. So we'll hold it here, but not the breath. The breath continues. Really reaching forward and back with the arms, really spreading out the shoulders. And often here to release the right hand down to lower back maybe to this left leg. 
The left arm can reach up towards the sky, really opening up this whole left side body. Like pressing rewind, the hands come down to the letter T. Bring it back up through center and step it up. Left foot steps up to knee, right foot. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, hands down to heart center. Turn towards the long side of the mat. We'll bring the feet nice and wide. So, a good idea of how wide to start is if you, it's one leg's length. So how do you figure out what one, what one leg's length is? If you were to drop your hips down and have one leg extended, that's the leg's length. It's different for everybody, so I won't give you like a number, but just an idea of where to start. Feet are parallel to one another. And we'll inhale, arms up to the letter T. I'm going to squeeze my legs in together. So it's like I'm trying to scrunch the mat together. I feel all this inner groin, inner thigh activate. And we hinge forward with a super flat back. When I can't go any further, if I want any further, my back would round. Take a breath in here. And on the next exhale, fold all the way down for our posture of Padasanasana, standing, wide angle, fold. I'm gonna to turn to the side so I can still see it and you can kind of see what I'm talking about, but you stay with your feet on the mat. That way you don't slide. <laughs> okay, so here we are in our standing wide angle fold. If your head, so at one leg's distance, your head shouldn't be reaching the floor even if you can fold all the way. If your head is reaching the floor, then just bring your feet in a little bit closer. And then if you're all the way up here and you're like, okay, there's nowhere for me to put my hands, it's really uncomfortable, you're gonna have to bring your feet a little bit wider and your hands might actually reach the floor. If your hands are reaching the floor, then just notice, can you bend the elbows a bit? Instead of pushing the ground away, can you allow yourself to Release the hands, release your top body weight, just like we did in our um, ragdoll earlier in class. So let the weight shift forward towards your toes without lifting your heels. Uh, sometimes we'll lean back, and that's actually a lot more pressure on the hamstrings. So we want to lean it forward. And that's going to help stack our hips up over our heels, over our knees. When we stack uh, joints on top of one another, you hear me kind of stressing that a lot. Um, it's just safer for our bodies. So this is a deep stretch. If you need somewhere to put your arms, you can even reach your hands out to the outsides of your feet or ankles. And then with that grip, you can start bending the elbows out to the sides. I'll show you a different angle. You can reach these elbows out to the sides to help pull your chest through. It's like you're trying to pull your chest through your legs. But your feet are the foundation as always. Legs are, or you know, not as always, but as often in the poses that we practice here. Legs and feet are the foundation, so I'm reaching through. Use that with the grip. Deep stretch for the back of the legs, for the hips. Just got one more deep breath here. You can walk the hands underneath the shoulders. Once again, just notice, are your legs engaged here? Squeeze them in towards one another, like you're trying to scrunch your mat together for stability in the legs and the lower back. Halfway lift, and then bring it all the way up. Whew, building up that strength. So here we are with legs wide. That's expert level, huh? Thanks, Kishab. <laughs> 
All right. Here we go. So we're gonna bring the heels in and the toes out. If you're in class yesterday, you probably know where this is going. We're gonna bend in the knees for our goddess pose, Devyasana. So we're trying to keep the knees over the ankles. We're giving the hips and abs a different direction stretch. And the hands can come down, thumbs down and in front. So I'm kind of like leaning uh, forward just a bit. And I'm gonna drop one shoulder and then the other. So all of, I'm letting the weight of my top body that usually would be my like leg strength holding it up. Instead, I'm pressing it into my hips by my hands pressing into the knees. Does that make sense? So I'm not like in a perpetual squat here where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not strong enough for this. It's like, no, I'm actually just like working to open up my hips. Then we'll bring it back to center. All right, now we're gonna use some strength here. Bring the chest up over the hips. Arms can open up like uh, cactus arms. Almost like you're a hieroglyphic. Full breath here, strong in the legs, strong in the arms. Really strong in the breath. We'll stand it up, toes face forward. Bring the toes, bring the feet and the arm. Bring the feet together and let's just give it a shake. The legs a shake. Bring a bounce to it, coming to the lymphatic shaking part of class. Shoulders can rise and drop, rise and drop. So I'm lifting my heels, letting the heels knock down with bent knees to create this reverberation in the body, this shake. So we're like looking for all that jiggle, all that shake. Yeah, no, no. That's okay. All right, so here we are, lymphatic shaking. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? <laughs> so we're creating a shake. You can actually like jump all the way if that is like, if you have the energy for it, right on. I always feel like if I have the energy for it, I have to take advantage of that and like full jump, you know? Today is not one of those days, but but you know, when we do the energy scan, it's like scale of one to 10, where are you at? If I'm like nine or like 10, then I'm like, I know I'm gonna be like jumping all over and taking up space. Today, I'm just like lift and drop, lift and drop. That's great too. The shoulders rise and drop. That kind of helps bring a little momentum to it. So lymphatic shaking is all about releasing tension and stress from the body it also helps move around the lymph, which is this uh, layer, like this webbing, uh, rather, this like fluid within the body. It's almost like um, giving a, a protein shake bottle a shake, like that one that has like the little metal thing inside to kind of whisk off the dusty powdery parts and help integrate them into the actual shake. Kind of like that. Why are we doing it? Well, think of it like when a rabbit almost gets eaten by a hawk in nature, or a gazelle almost gets eaten by a lion. You ever like watch that on Animal Planet? But they get away, or the hawk misses, or whatever. The animal obviously is in a state of fear and panic, flight mode, and then they shake it off, and they go back to their lives. The receiver just returns to the herd. You know, they just like find the rest of their herd and like continue with their lives. Um, so it's kind of like that. So we're just like shaking off all these close encounters, whether they're real, like you go to step off the curb and a bus almost hits you, or they're perceived. If you're afraid someone's gonna call you or tell you they don't like you or whatever. Whatever perceived danger, real or imagined, it builds up tension in our bodies. This is really an opportunity to shake that off, literally. So when you feel like stopping, sometimes it's nice to just like shake your hands out, 
just keep it going. It kind of becomes like automatic, where you're not just putting effort towards it, but you're building up this heat, or in yoga we call it this prana, in the body. <laughs> it would be helpful in sports. Yeah, I'm sure. Definitely not like sports queen, but <laughs> I can, I mean, people who play sports are humans, and I know for a fact this is helpful to humans, so for sure. All right, the next part of, <sighs> nice and warm, the next part of our uh, letting go practice is called breath of joy, and it's a four-part breath. Three consecutive sips of air in, through the nose, and a big ha huh, out through the mouth. So it goes inhale, arms sweep up, inhale, arms sweep out, inhale, arms sweep up, and a big ha, huh, arms get thrown back. I usually do running. Oh yeah, I love running. But I still shake. Like I still do, lymphatic shaking is still different than running, for sure. Um, Cause like, I wouldn't count lymphatic shaking as cardio. Running is definitely has its own benefits. So we have about 10 of these. Just be mindful that you're not close enough to anything to smack into it. We'll bend in the knees. In. 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 Ha! In. 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 In, 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 ha, 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 ha. Three left. If you haven't joined in yet, now's your chance. temperature, increased heart rate, but what else shows up when you let yourself take up space and be loud? What shows up as a resistance to fully participating? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. We'll gently blink the eyes open, take a sip of water, towel off any sweat that may have built up. All right, so if you're already on the ground, you just stay there. But if you're not, you can come down with me. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, hands on chins. And exhale, hands come down to the ground deep. Bend in the knees, deep, deep, so deep, that you come down to seated. 
we'll drop the, um, no, I want to do this instead, drop both knees over to the right, and we'll come up to hands and knees for our tabletop pose once more. There is, we didn't do our hand, our wrist resiliency work today, and I want to get that in. I'd rather get that in with you guys <laughs> than by myself. I feel like it's something we've all been working towards together, building up our wrist strength. So, we're gonna work on our uh, like hand push-ups basically here. So what we're doing is fingers are spread wide, and then we're gonna lift the wrists up off the ground and slowly lower the palms back down. Breathing here. I'm not using momentum, so I'm not like rocking back and forth. I'm not using shoulders. I'm just using forearm and hand strength. So right now I'm working up to an, to an easy 10, right? So it's not easy. So I can make it, but it's not easy yet. And it's hard for me not to like use my head as momentum by the end. So I'm just building up the strength. 10 is my number, but you might be working up to five or three. Like the first time I was showing these, I like couldn't, it's not that I didn't have the strength to do one, I just couldn't like understand like how the person was doing it. So it's really like a press down into your knuckles that helps lift you up. So pressing into this part and pressing my wrists forward. So I'm pressing, I'm trying to do this almost but without lifting the knuckles off the ground. So we're like more than halfway there. I think we've got four left. If you're going at my pace, you're going at your pace, that's beautiful, that's great. And there's really no rush. If anything, you wanna be lowering down at half the rate, like twice as slow as you were going up. That release, just like in any weight training, is gonna be where this real strength and stability is built. Two, and last one. Ooh. Tuck your toes under, sit back on the heels, fingers interlace, you give yourself a little roll out, release. Gentle shake of water off. Three, two, one. All right. And then let's keep opening up the hips today by coming into frog pose. So um, which direction is gonna make the most sense? So remember when we were in our goddess pose? Hmm? I'm gonna do this on the floor. So just easier to get there from tabletop. Maybe not wearing the best pants for this. Ooh, ooh. Well anyway, knees come out super, super wide, but I'm still doing this 90 degree knee, 90 degree ankle situation. Um, this might make more sense from the side for you guys to see, or not. Yeah, no, that's weirder. Okay. So, <laughs> just like goddess pose, we have our knees bent, our ankles bent, and I'm walking my knees out, 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 out to the sides as far as I can to make sure my knees are on the mat or on the floor. And we are... Holding it here. Optionally, uh, you can bring your elbows down to the ground. And then from here, you can let the hips sink forward and a little bit back to find kind of like where like the sweetest part of that stretch is. Chat says, I found injury so I can't do most of the exercises, but I did this one a few hours ago. Vitalasana, Marjayasana. Nice. I don't know what that last pose is off the top of my head. I'm not from. I might. I might know the pose, but just not know the name. Totally possible. Probably. Um, but you did this pose. This is like a pretty intense pose if you've been injured um, in the past. Well, it depends if it was in your hips. I guess if you have a shoulder injury, this pose is not. Doesn't. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have to do with that. But. Okay, so here we are. You might be sending your hips back a bit. 
into the stretch. You can bring your head even to come down. Not this, the last one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's great, just do, just do what you can. There's really no rush. Like I always say, it's not a dance routine. It's a yoga practice. So every pose doesn't have to be part of your sequence today. Just what works for you and serves you. So we're just breathing fully here. And the exhales, relax something in the body. Maybe deepening the posture a bit by sending the hips a little further back or a little closer to the ground. And just let the chest be heavy, let the hips be heavy. We just got one last deep breath here. Cross the hands into the ground and then just rock forward. Ooh. Bring the knees back under. Let's roll it over to the long side of the mat just so you can come to lay down flat on the mat. It was an easier way for you to get there. I apologize. I was just facing awkward because of the camera. So, oh, so a little bit of. Um, Front side body opening, so we're just opening the hips out to the sides, right? So now we'll bring the sh elbows underneath the shoulders, 90 degrees, back up like making the letter L. I'm going to squeeze the glutes and press the hips into the ground, and then press my chest forward. So as my hips are pressing into the ground, my chest is reaching forward, and I should get a stretch on abdominal muscles. This is called Sphinx Pose. Tops of the feet are pressed super hard into the ground. Really pressing the hips into the ground, really pressing the chest forward, pulling my shoulders back. Sphinx. One more deep breath here. And then release uh, from the pose. Just bring one arm under and roll it over onto your back. Hug your knees in towards your chest, a little rock side to side, and lower back a little massage. And then we'll let both knees roll over to the right. Left hand, sorry, right hand lands on top of left knee. And left arm opens up like the letter T. We'll press the shoulder down to the ground. And maybe even the gaze looks over towards that extended left arm. And then just notice, is it up by your head or down by your hips? Just keep it straight out. For a supine spinal twist, Supta Matsundrasana. I also do this, but my teacher just told me not to put pressure from my shoulders. Oh, okay, well, some teachers do it by like trying to get your knees to touch the ground, but I think it's safer for your lower back to focus on your shoulders because that's just on your upper back. So like don't get hung up on whether your knees touch the ground or one another, but just this shoulder's pushing down, but I'm not putting it down with any pressure, just my own flexibility, right? So just this shoulder's pulling down by itself but mine are specific to heal injury, so maybe it's a little bit different. Maybe, do, um, where where were you injured? Like, if it was in your shoulder, then maybe that makes sense, actually. But this just helps us from being, like, here. We want to be here. So we're getting the full twist on the spine. We just got a couple breaths here. Just let gravity do the work. And the breath. Let the head come.
come up through center. Let the knees come up through center. Spine a lower back. Ah, sorry to hear that. That sounds very painful. Yeah, so for sure, this is going to be a lower back releasing posture or stretching posture. So I'm sure if you've been recently injured, you want to be extra careful not to put any extra um, strain on it. So you're going to gently release the knees over to the left. Right, uh, left hand lands on top of right knee, right arm opens up like the letter T. In which case, yeah, I guess you wouldn't want to be, well, pressing the shoulder down, I suppose. I definitely don't want to talk from a place of injuries. Like when it comes to injuries, guys, if you have physical therapists or teachers in your life um, or doctors in your life telling you what you can and can't do, definitely listen to them over me. I'm speaking from a general term, general sense, we want to be bringing that right shoulder blade down to the ground versus everything else is just relaxing just using breath and gravity to release relax into the posture We'll bring the head back up through center, bring the knees up through center. You can have a hug and just notice, is there any last movement or wiggle or stretch that they're asking for? All class, we tell our body what to do and now we just ask back, is there anything left that we can do back for it? When we ask our bodies what we can do for it, it probably will not answer in words. So just kind of let yourself move intuitively don't get hung up on how it looks or what it's called. I'm building up this language between us and our bodies, building up this trust. You trust that what your body's telling you is the truth. Like a lot of times we're told not to listen to our bodies because our bodies will lie to us and tell us that we're craving food. And, you know, all of that jazz. Like, all this like shame about cookies and all that shit like just let that go and just start building up this new relationship with your body assuming just try on that your body actually knows what's best for it in this moment when it comes to movement it knows whether your shoulders should be pressed down in that twist or not right it knows if it wants to be an inversion or not if it wants to go 110% in chaturangas and sun salutations, or if it wants to do a relaxing, gentle class, like it knows these things. Maybe you think it doesn't know, but maybe you really actually just need to work on your communication skills with yourself, you know? Just try that. I mean, maybe that's not true, but I think it's worth the experiment to find out and know for sure. Just like we work with the breath, we work with the body. We're not working against the breath. Like nobody, I think, ever feels that way. Like, oh, we're working against the breath. We're trying to get rid of short breaths to only do long breaths. Like, no, but I think a lot of us think, like, nobody ever thinks that sounds silly. Same thing with the body. We're not working against the body. We're not trying to overcome anything, right, in the body. We're, like, working with it, working with it. I'm thinking of doing some strength training. Yeah, you totally should. I think everybody should. My whole life changed when I started doing strength training because I was only doing yoga, um, like really like gentle yoga, which is awesome. And also like you plateau eventually. All right, so wrapping up whatever your last movements are, last intuitive movements to really get any wiggles out as we set up for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. That looks like the legs down the length of the mat, feet at least a foot apart, legs so relaxed that our legs naturally splay out to the sides. Feet naturally splay out to the sides. Arms released down to the ground, palms face open, shoulders tucked under to support the chest. And the head's nice and neutral here. 
gaze up towards the sky, our eyes can close. The invitation is for the eyes to close, but if that's not comfortable for you, just a soft gaze towards the ceiling. This brings any pain to your lower back, laying flat on your back. Remember, there's no pillow, no block behind your head. You might bend in the knees, become wide to the edges of the mat, and knock the knees together. Lift up the hips to round the lower back, gently releasing the hips back down to the ground. So now your lower back is nice and long. Completely relax any muscular effort from the lower legs called broken bridge pose. It should sustain itself. And that'll release any pressure from the lower back. So this might be good for you, Kashab. All right, staying laying down or seated if that if you already know that that's what's best for you. I'm gonna come up to seated just so I can speak to you um, through this meditation instead of speaking to my ceiling. And Shavasana, best part of yoga, I agree. <laughs> I really do, I love moving, guys. But uh, I agree, I think Shavasana is the best part of yoga. So Shavasana is all about integrating all of the effort that you've put into class. So all of this new body awareness, breath knowledge can really sink into your bones and your body wisdom. And I argue it's probably, it's, well, it's definitely equally important, as important, maybe more important than the movement, but really they complement one another. So it's not really about comparing what's more important and what's not. And we'll start this with three cleansing breaths. Just like in the beginning of class, but you just let your shoulders be soft. There's no um, need to lift the shoulders or anything like that. Allow the breath to continue in and out through the nose if that's available. Letting your exhalations become longer and deeper than your inhalations. Invite space between top and bottom teeth. When the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth, as the jaw hangs heavy. Nose and nostrils relax. And gently allowing air to pass through like waves lapping up to shore. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets, eyelids just barely touching. Space between the eyebrows broadens as the muscles of the forehead relax. And all the muscles surrounding the ears ears themselves with all their wrinkles and folds. And down into the ear canals. Rest. Muscles of the back of the head, top of the head and the hairline relax. Whole head relaxed and heavy, supported by the ground below. Neck and throat release. 
shoulders melt away. Upper arms and elbows relax. Forearms and wrists release. The palms, backs of the hands, knuckles, fingers, fingertips. All hands alive with vibration. All hands alive with creative potential. Rest and integrate all that you practice. All arms rest heavy, supported by the ground below like lead sinking into hot sand. Upper back, space between the shoulder blades. Middle back and lower back, relax. Chest, and belly gently rise and fall with the breath. Whole torso resting heavy, relaxing, heavy, supported by the ground below. Glutes, pelvis, hips, relax. Thighs and knees melt away. Shins and calves rest. Ankles and heels relax. Arches, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet and all of the toes rest. Whole feet rest. Whole legs relax. Back side of the body relaxes. Front side of the body relaxes. Top half. Bottom half. Left side. Right side. body rest, whole body rest, whole body rest, Notice if in your mind, if even for just one moment, there was silence in that inner dialogue. Notice 
notice if in your breath there's ease. Notice if in your body the places of tension have found space. Places of restlessness have found peace. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. And know that in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more and nothing less. Allow your inhalations to deepen now and become longer than exhalations. Every inhale replaces that feeling of heaviness with a feeling of lightness and openness. Expansion in the front side body as fingers begin to wiggle and toes begin to curl. Head can gently rock side to side. And let your arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Knees bend in towards the body in towards the chest and roll over to one side, whichever side feels natural, landing in a fetal position. Fully relaxed and fully supported by the ground below you, bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. That's beautiful, Greg. Yes, just like that. Or bringing, um, setting an intention now. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the, off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. Hands gently press into the ground to come up to a seated position, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. Today we worked on a series of hip strengthening and stretching postures. The first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste is said out loud to one another and everyone who held space for this practice, namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me today. I hope you found something that serves you. Greg says, practice makes practice, perfection is an illusion, namaste, I'm okay. I love that. I feel like I wanna like paint that and just like frame it and have it hanging on my wall above like my workspace. <laughs> uh, hello, good morning, who's here? All right. Namaste Bodhi. Yes, thank you, tips are super, super appreciated. Um, they, uh, the hunt for the crystal singing bowl is still on, by the way. Um, cause yeah, there's a bunch of crystal sh shops in OB, but they sell little crystals, not crystal bowls. So the <laughs> the search continues. But I know that when I find it, it's gonna be the perfect one. But your tips go towards electricity, oh, internet, yay, and singing bowls. <laughs> um, and, uh, and they're obviously never required. I'm here every day for you, baby. Uh, just your presence is amazing. Um, but they are super appreciated because, uh, yeah, uh, all the reasons that I just listed. And you do get a recording of class, um, that has timestamps to all your favorite parts of class. All the meditations, the, the breath work, the movement. Um, so you can just skip to your, the part that you want to work on. If you just need to scream in the middle of your day, you can just like jump over to the breath of joy part, um, without having to like scroll through all of the other stuff. 
um, you know, and just take like a five minute break to just breathe loudly and yell a bit, you know? Um, uh, Lisa, cool cat, <laughs> or Suolu, sorry, I'm like, I'm, I like know your guys' names in real life, so I don't mean to like dox you, but <laughs> like, as if it's not like a super popular name. Um, yes, I love it. Um, really loved having you guys in class today. So we did lots of hip opening work. Um, and so, so this is like the anti sitting at a desk all day, like class, if you will, um, which may feel a little counterintuitive because we do spend a lot of time seated, right? But the, the, the specific positionings of our seat is actually helping undo how we now modern day humans sit in a chair. Um, and I speak about it a bit during lymphatic shaking. I can't remember if I said it today or not, but one of the reasons that we shake is to release that like built up physical trauma, like the trauma that like we manifest physically into our bodies. And in yoga, those are called samskara. Um, and they're basically like blocked energy points. Um, like I had a teacher describe as like a gingerbread man kind of thing where you got these like gumdrops that are like stuck to you all over but internally and energetically but also physically right they get knots in your back um like people can understand that so that's like yoga would say that those are built up from uh the traumas that show up in our lives so our hips are generally in the yoga community um not speaking medically here um attached to attached to a lot of that like built up emotional trauma so if you're feeling any type of way um i know i always say like i want you to leave the mat feeling better than you did stepping onto it but i just want to be clear i mean physically i physically want you to feel better stepping off your mat than you did stepping on but emotionally whatever comes up is 100 percent okay um you know uh this isn't you don't have to like leave your mat happy to have had a good class. Sometimes leaving the mat upset is exactly, I mean, what was gonna happen and like what needs to happen. So if you're crying or you're angry or you're, um, what's it called, uh, having all these other emotions showing up, uh, then you, uh, you're exactly where, you're exactly where you should be. Just breathe through it, keep breathing and um, just allow for it. XP, Mike XD, hello friend, welcome to the stream. Do you know anything about contortion training? Yeah, I do. Um, I trained with a, a contortionist from a circus up in Canada. And um, we're homies. <laughs> that was back when I was uh, competitive pole dancing. So, yeah, I don't bring in too, I don't bring in too many like contortion training things into class, like we don't, we don't do those things in class, but some of the knowledge that I picked up like through that definitely gets brought in. There are certain things that, that I'll bring in. Um, so, uh, but like last week I brought some stuff in, but I don't usually call it out in the moment. I think people are intimidated or have like a mindset about like what contortion training is all about. And they're like, why am I doing this? Um, but I think there's a lot of value in it. Uh, why do you ask? What are you What are you working on, XP Mike? Um, or what are you curious about in regards to contortion training? Um, I'd love to know. Um, yeah, so just wanted to mention that. You know, however you're feeling emotionally or mentally is all good. When I say just we're letting like the thoughts show up and pass by like clouds, like some days our minds are going to be a fucking storm, like a hurricane, right? It's going to be like nonstop thoughts. And that's not a bad day. It's just something to notice. You know, some days are going to be cloudy, some are not. XP Mike XD says, I really like your name. It's fun to say. Um, I've been training for a couple years now and was possibly looking into starting some yoga too. Oh, cool. Good for you. Um, well, you're welcome. I teach every day. Um, at 8.30 a.m. Pacific, uh, so I don't know. But if you look on my schedule, it'll like change it to your to your um, time zone. But I'm here same time every day. Uh, mostly I'm doing like all levels yoga, so I wouldn't call it necessarily like 
beginners or introductory yoga, although I will break things down if people ask me. So I get lots of whispers and DMs of people saying like, oh, I can't, like, I, I think I'm doing downward facing dog wrong or things like that. So then the next class, I'll make sure to like break it down. But otherwise we basically like flow so you can come in at any level. And then um, I try to change it up so people think, if people like type in like oh like what's the next step past this or or I can't do this and like I'll like show you a step forward and a step back progress progression wise um but definitely come check it out are there specific body parts that you are working on or is it mostly like spinal flexibility type stuff because uh you might find yoga helpful for stabilizing some of the muscles that you're stretching out in your contortion training um I found that they work together really, really well. Um, or even just to, like balance it out. Because sometimes I know when you're training, you're just focusing on one thing again and again and again. So it's good. yoga is good to like address the rest of the body. I'm interested in the art of yoga. So I'm okay with learning anything really. Oh, well then definitely please come through. You're totally, totally invited. Um, we really cover head to toe type stuff. Like I said, all levels. Um, there's people that, that come on to stream that have been practicing longer, like longer than I have been, like longer than I've been alive, <laughs> actually literally longer than I've been alive. And, um, and people who are just taking their first yoga class here on stream. So, uh, if you're con been contortion training for a couple of years and you definitely have the body awareness necessary to safely flow through class. And, uh, like I said, it's not a dance routine. We're just like building up a relationship between body, mind, breath. Yes, I'm doing a lot of deep back flexibility. Right, hopefully looking to perform once COVID is over. Woohoo, that's so exciting. Good for you. Um, yeah, deep back flexibility. Yeah, so a lot of, um, we don't do anything too, too crazy with, with back flexibility, but we are like building in some more like core core strengthening uh, practices. So I think that'll be a good balance for what you're up to. Because you know, everything that goes in one direction goes in the other. So that's gonna help stabilize as well. I'm gonna work on Marinelli Bend right now. That sounds so awesome. So are you training in an actual physical space or is this all digital? I don't know where you're at. I'm in California right now. So things are just starting to open up again. Always looking to improve core strength. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. you. You get it, like everything is spinal health, everything is core strength, everything else builds up, builds up from there. So like shoulders and, and leg flexibility and all of that um, without a strong core and a flexible spine is gonna be, we're gonna hit a wall or hit an injury. So I think you got the right idea. Physical space, yeah, imagine. Contortion training would be really difficult to do online. You really need somebody like hands-on with you. Um, to get you where you want to go. Awesome. Well, it's been really great hanging out with you guys. Oh, looks like Fuzzy Wuzzy's on. You know, both Jen, Sets and Reps is on. We can go say hi to Sets and Reps. It's Monday. And a couple of you guys have, have mentioned strength training. Um, so, let's go raid Sets and Reps. Because he is one of my strength training homies. <laughs> uh, and he, but he does like weights and stuff. He's like a bodybuilder. So it's a nice, it'll be, a, it'll definitely be a different vibe than mine. But he's also like really good vibes, really friendly. Um, XP Mike XD, it was really nice to meet you. Definitely come through for class tomorrow. We start uh, about 8.30. Um, with meditation and then movement um, and then we end with a nice long meditation as well so there's a lot of um, meditation in there as well so uh, but it really complements the I think really you can't have one without the other definitely try to make it yeah any day this week except Thursday is my birthday oh I was supposed to mention that um, I don't think I'm gonna stream on Thursday guys I've been uh, streaming every day today is day 70 73 73 maybe 74 um so yeah um schedule's pretty tight right now at the studio about five to six hours a day almost wow okay well no worries come hang out even just for tea time now it's like post class um and uh, on the weekends too streaming so you know i'm around
All right, let's go say hi to sets and reps. Namaste, my friends. Have a great Monday. Fucking crush it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, be good to yourselves. Check in with your breath. Check in with your intentions. Um, and, and be well. Be well.